First of all, we're going to have a look at sculpting the kick drum using LFO tool. So I'll just open up the mixer. So I've got two kick drum sounds layered to make up my kick drum. Kind of a low one. And more of a, a click sound. I've got them rooted to a bus now and I've put LFO tool on the bus. Let's just open that up. Now, I'm going to put the rate to a 4-4 pattern. And I'm going to switch on the waveform. And these are now off at the moment, so we'll leave them as, as they are. Solo the channel. So now we can see our kick drum waveform. And that means we can actually use our LFO shape to sculpt the kick drum somewhat. So let's say, for example, we wanted to bring out the snap, but we didn't want any of the tail of the kick drum. Just make a new point here. Bring this down and bring up the volume. We now have just the click of the kick drum. Or we can use it to determine how much of the tail we hear. So if you have a boomy kick drum which is taking up too much space, you could use the 4-4 right here and just use the LFO shape to sculpt exactly the length of tail that you want. Now let's say, for example, we wanted to mix out a little bit of the middle part of the kick drum, the kind of mid-range of the kick drum. We could do something like this. So we have the snap of the kick. And we have a little dip in the middle part of the kick. Okay, let's say we wanted a softer attack to the kick drum. So really we can sculpt the kick drum exactly how we want it. Exactly the right attack, and exactly the right tail. Okay, so I'm gonna put in a shape here. So we'll take away a little bit of the tail of the kick drum and I'm gonna bring in the bass line. We just reinitialize this. Okay. So if we make these kind of the same size, these two windows, but the easiest way is probably to make them as small as they'll go. We know they're the same size. Okay. And line them up. What we can do is actually make sure that the baseline. LFO shape is syncing to the kick drum. So as the kick drum is going down, the bass line's coming up. Now if you get that nasty click, you bring up the smooth control. And also there's way too much modulation going on. You can also fix this by just bringing back this last point. Thank you.
So you can see how you can really work on the kick and bass relationship to get it exactly right. And this is such an important part of 4-4 music. If you're making house techno, any of these kind of genres, getting the bass and the kick right is such a big part of it. It really, really is. It's make or break for the track. So add a photo can be really useful in allowing you to achieve that. Okay, so we'll just leave those as they are. Okay, so also we can use add a photo just as a straight filter or as an auto filter if we apply the LFO modulation to it. So let's say we wanted to route these drum loops to their own bus. We apply an LFO tool on here. Let's reinitialize. Switch on the filter. use it as an auto panner or even an auto panning filter So you can use LFO tool for more traditional static effects. Well, in this case, I'm modulating it now, but if we were to just modulate the cutoff control, we could use it as a perfectly suitable straight up filter. We're going to use LFO tool as a MIDI effect to enable us to sidechain compress a synth sound against a kick drum, which is not a simple 4-4 pattern. And we're also going to use LFO tool as a transcate style effect as well to add some increased movement to this sound. Now what I have here is Cthulhu from XL Records, which is a chord generator plugin, playing some chords going into Serum, and also a kick, snare and hat pattern coming from Ultrabeat. So what I want is sidechain compression to occur when the kick drum plays on this Serum synth sound. To achieve that, I'm going to make a new track. And I'm going to add in add a photo as a MIDI controlled effect. Make that window a little bit bigger. Okay, so in the sidechain option, I'm going to choose the serum patch. And on the serum channel, I'm going to route that to no output so we don't hear it twice. So now we have the LFO shape working on the volume. So what I'm going to do now is copy down the kick drum pattern that I have here. There it is. Now if I switch that onto note retrigger, it's going to retrigger the LFO every single time the kick drum plays. Let's make it a little bit of a slower rate. and change the shape. Let's 
get one on the snare drum as well. So it's worth experimenting with this shape to get exactly what you want. So maybe we could have maybe a slow beginning and then speeding up a bit later. Okay, that's the first part. So next up, let's add another LFO to onto this track. And let's change the ray. Well, we'll leave it on quarter notes actually, but what I'm gonna do is drag up and down with shift held down to create a little choppy gate style effect. And I'm actually gonna reduce the volume. And now we've got a kind of gate effect on the sound. By playing with that swing, we get those quite interesting sections of speeding up and slowing down of the LFO. So you can see that by using LFO tool alongside the MIDI notes with note re-trigger on, we can actually sidechain a sound to a kick drum which isn't just playing a simple pattern. And obviously using this gate effect has a huge amount of uses. We could, for example, choose not to use the volume, but instead apply it to a filter. Lots of fun to be had. Okay, so hopefully from this video series you can see that LR Photo is very much more than just a 4-4 sidechain compressor emulator. There's all these different things we can do with it and get really, really creative with. But actually as a sidechain compressor, it's also fantastic as well. The ability to be able to put in your own shapes means you can get exactly the kind of contour you need between the kick drum and whatever it is you're sidechaining. <laughs>